welcome to a marvelous event, a tribute to Dorothy Fadiman's 30 years of filmmaking. I'm Jim Fadiman, and having been married to Dorothy all that time, I was given the privilege of introducing the whole evening. And I think some of you know that it may take a village to raise a child, but it takes a small city to make a film. And we have this evening in this audience about 50 of the over 1,000 people who have assisted Dorothy throughout her career. So this is a community project, a community event, and Dorothy is a community filmmaker. This evening, what you're going to see is a panel discussion from people who've worked with Dorothy, followed by uh, a retrospective or clips or selections from most of her films, followed by a few more questions. The reason we're all here is because we believe in the vision that is television. We believe that documentaries can and do change the world. And we believe in supporting each other. Thank you very much for being here this evening. Let's, uh, let's move on over to um, Tony. Uh, Tony is a writer. He's also a filmmaker and a teacher. Um, 30 years of experience in technology and media production. He's joined, joined up with Dorothy as an intern, and now he's written a book with Dorothy. Um, give us a, a, a sense of that journey from being a te successful <laughs> tech writer <laughs> to ending up with Dorothy Fadiman. Well, I was working as a technical writer, freelance technical writer, and the two main skills seemed to be to have sharp elbows and a thick skin. Yeah, right. And uh, so I, uh, but it was very unsatisfying, and I was fascinated with film, and I went to film school. And as I went through film school, I realized that all the teachers that I was studying with had films sitting on the shelf, films that they mm -hmm. got out, they were not distributed. And about that time, I went to a seminar. I was going to all these little seminars, and I went to a seminar with Dorothy. And I realized that this was a woman who not only finished every film she started, but mm -hmm. she kept them in distribution. Right. She has films that have been in distribution for 20 years. So one of the other things that I was doing at the time was I was running meditation workshops, don't ask. And, uh, OK, we won't. So <laughs> So I was in, uh, actually I was in Florida in the middle of a meditation workshop and uh, I got the idea that I wanted to be an intern for Dorothy. I have no idea where this came from. I <laughs> picked up the phone <laughs> and I called her and I said, Dorothy, well, I'm the guy you met in this seminar and I want to be an intern. This led to a long okay. conversation and she said, fine, you know, well, okay, come on and be an intern. And I realized later that uh, I had no idea at the time that interns were generally lovely ladies from Stanford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I was continuously sitting around taking notes, and one day she said, uh, well, would you like to write a book? So the publishers asked me to write a book, and I said, okay. And that led to 22 revisions, five years. Wow. Yeah. And the main challenge was to get everything in Dorothy's voice. Yeah, and give us a, give us a sense of what you learned about, I mean, this was quite a bit different from what you'd been doing, mm -hmm. so give us a sense of, of what you learned about Dorothy's philosophy in all of that. I probably think the biggest thing I learned from Dorothy was, uh, I, I thought about this, you know, before the show, and I, I think the biggest thing I learned from her was a sense of honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. And it starts with choosing the right idea. Mm -hmm. In other words, not an idea that's going to impress somebody else or I think is and that's that is essentially the heart of the book and then not once you've chosen then the next thing was finishing things finishing projects and uh, then once they're finished you get to look at it and say great half the work is done now we yeah. have to get it out right yeah thank you pick what you might consider this is really putting you on the spot Oh, no, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love being on the spot. What you consider to be your... No, let's just talk about Stealing America. I just want to talk about Stealing America. Give us a sense of that, how that evolved. In terms of fundraising? Yeah, and, and, and completion, making it right. happen. Every, every film actually has a similar shape. 
-hmm. which is at the base is anywhere from 10 to 20 to 100 to hundreds to a thousand people who give a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and that's the base of the pyramid. Then there's people who can afford it and who care, who start to build up the middle, and when foundations and people with much more money see that we have that level of grassroots support, then I can ask for much more. There's someone in the room here who said it's okay to ask for a hundred dollars for the abortion series. So I began to ask for a hundred dollars. And suddenly I ended up with the Ford Foundation, the Packard Foundation, and I asked for a hundred and fifty thousand. And they said, I don't think that's enough. <laughs> and they sent me a check for a hundred and seventy-five thousand. But it began with this. And that every film has that shape. Mm -hmm. So you got away from stealing America, though. Well, stealing America evolved um, because the problem continued to persist. Right. And in fact, most people here watching or in the room don't even realize that there was a tremendous amount of rigging in 2008. But because so many people came out, there was the illusion that we'd solved the problem of having our votes stolen. So incidentally, I'm thinking of re-releasing Stealing mm -hmm. America before okay. 2010. Yeah. Um, but, but, what, but what I've done by enrolling the community in terms of Tom Sawyer saying, would you like a brush? The, f the fence needs to be painted. I actually have come to the place of inviting people to pay to come to feedback screenings. Mm -hmm. But there's a tremendous logic to that. This was true of Stealing America, or moment by moment, which is when people buy in to the project and feel that they're making an investment. Not only are they going to listen to my input, but you'll take my $25 and you'll invest it in the film. Suddenly you have exactly what we were talking about that Jim mentioned, which is the community feels like it's making a film. I know I'm off topic. But yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay because you... I get excited. Because you have a key word in there, community. Absolutely. And, and look at the community that's come out to wish you a happy birthday. But this isn't I mean, just any old community. I had a, I, those thousand people yeah. he didn't mention, but it's just local. I have a thousand people right. locally. Right. And I pick almost this number to come, and it's just exciting to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but why, uh, you know, as, as this, as this uh, producer who sort of tackles just about anything, right. I look to you and I say, what, what, what is it that what is it about you, Dorothy, that I, I know the answer to this, but I want to hear it from you. Why is it that you chose or choose social issues, women's issues, so forth? Please. Well, without getting too airy fairy, I do have a sense, call it what you will, an inner voice, spirit, an intuition. And I am given marching orders, and I follow them. And when I get off track, then I get feedback like that. So <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very straightforward. I don't want to get hit in the face all the time. So, um, but the marching orders don't come down this way. The marching orders are more like an invitation. You know, are mm. you willing? Mm. And if I say yes, then we go to the next level. And I have to be careful, because at any point when I say yes, I know I'm going to get something even more challenging. And it is a dialogue, but I experience them as marching orders, because once I say yes, I don't have a lot of choices about backing down. Yeah, Dorothy, you work harder than anyone I've ever known. I often use you as an example of the person I know who works hardest. <laughs> what about, is there a personal trade-off at all? Do you, do you feel that? That might be a they question just for blend Jim. into one. Well, I will tell you all something. My daughter, Renee, is here, and I took a workshop. And what basically what I learned in the workshop was to apologize to your children if you've deprived them. So I waited for the right moment. I put my children together, and I said, Renee and Maria, um, I really want to tell you how sorry I am that I've spent so much time making movies. And they they laughed and they said, What are you apologizing for? We're so proud of you. And then they said, whenever we needed you, you were there. You were there. What would you say? 
<laughs> no, I mean, I, I'd love a few words from you about the trade-off. Can you say something about that? You can, they, you can project. This is my husband of 45 years who has survived 22 films. One of them is still a work in progress. It's called Rainbow Man. <laughs> And one of them is not worth talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when you live with someone who has an enormous vision and an enormous heart and can pull together an enormous crowd and who loves to work with people, um, you basically, like all of us in all of our relationships, you get used to it, you take the enormous benefits, you pretend the other stuff is fine, <laughs> <laughs> and you end up at times like this not wishing to have traded a single moment of it. <laughs> when, um, yes, Tony. When we were, when we went through that, the book is called Producing with Passion, and when we went through the book with, to make it interesting, to, we had to put stories in it, and one of the things Dorothy said was, well, it's about surviving your passion, mm -hmm. and the story of Jim and right. Dorothy That's is in surviving it. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank, 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 thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, the Media Center, Mid Peninsula Community Media Center. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Thank you, and thank you, Dorothy Sadam.